G'day, g'day everyone, welcome, welcome back to another edition of Gov's Hero Review Videos. Today we are checking out another of the seasonal summer heroes. Specifically, we are checking out the five-star legendary hero, Variant Hudson, the Splatmaster Frontman. Um, specifically, this is, I will make a very big note about this, this is the review for the Variant form of Hudson. If you are chasing the normal version review, please jump down into the description of the video. Uh, I will put a link there um, for you to go and watch that video. But for this one, we are looking at the variant version of Hudson. So variant Hudson is available for summons now from the seasonal summer portal, which comes around once every year for the entire month of July. Now the event only appears once a year, but even though it's only there for a year, it does run for a four week duration. So it comes out as being roughly the same um, total appearance time as some of the more frequently appearing events. Um, there is only one month as well that you can summon um, in for this event, so there is no bridging of Heroes of the Month like we see with some of the other seasonal events, like the Spring and Halloween ones. Um, it is unfortunately just a single Hero of the Month. Um, a bit of background to the family and the, the portal itself. So it was originally added to the game in July 2021, uh, in which there were five original heroes, which was Hudson, normal Hudson that is, Hanalee, uh, Delphine, Lana and Finley. Uh, a year later in uh, July 2022, Guppy and Wade were added. And then in July 23, the portal was overhauled with the addition of Variant Hudson. Um, here's the first and only variant for the Summer Family um, to date. There wasn't actually anything added in the 2024 edition of the event, which is a bit of a shame. Um, the portal lodge themselves, we can go take a look at those. So we can see that there is a 1% chance to draw a variant hero, i.e. Hudson, uh, and a 0.6% chance remaining for the other six options in the portal. So um, to put that in a little bit of perspective, there is um, for 100 summons in this portal, you have an 80.1% probability of gaining any of the five-star legendary event heroes. Um, Across those 100 summons, though, there is a 63.4% probability that you will gain a variant hero and a 45.2% probability that you will gain a non-variant hero. Um, but those are for some just any of the, the heroes in the, the portal of those categories. Uh, on the specific side of things, so on a specific... In 100 summons, you have a 63.4% probability of gaining a specific variant hero because there is only the one so far. Um, but for a specific non-variant hero, it does drop down to being just a 9.5% probability. Um, now note those last two will jump around a little bit uh, if additional variants get added to the portal um, because you'll essentially take a hero from one category and put them into the other one. So it just changes how the stats get broken down in the end. Uh, a couple quick housekeeping things that I do need to cover off on before we jump into this earn, uh, review video in earnest. Now, note number one, um, the variant that I am reviewing is not a wholly discrete hero in the game. It's not independent from its base version. Uh, essentially, what it's more akin to is like an alter ego. So what this means in the game is that you are only able to use one form or the other for war purposes, but also because the variant is an alter ego of the base, you can't get away with just leveling up the variant format. You have to level both of them up, unfortunately. Um, to some degree. So if you want to max out the variant, you do have to at the very least push the base copy down uh, up to uh, fifth promotion level one at the very minimum. Whether you finish maxing it out is up to you, um, but if you want to put emblems on the variant, you'll have to max them out as well. All right, so that's note number one. It is not a wholly discrete hero that the variant is. It is sort of an alter ego. Note number two that I will say is that the portal stats is showing the, in, uh, sorry, are inclusive of the variant bonus. So it's not uh, like variant Hudson has 738 attack plus 6% additional from the variant bonus. No, that stat number that you can see there is already including those variant bonuses, all right? Uh, this plays more into effect for the normal version because you can't actually level the variant version up without getting the variant bonus, but the normal version of Hudson, you can actually level without getting the variant bonus. Quite simply, if you don't have the variant, um, i.e. you summoned him before the variant was added, or you just don't level the variant up. Um, so yeah, 
the, those, those stats are already inclusive of the variant bonus. The third thing I need to point out is that the game is currently incorrectly displaying the effect of the charge generation variant bonus as being a speed improvement. Now, I have made a separate video explaining this in great detail and great depth about what the bug is and what impact it has. There should be a link on screen about now, but there is also a link to it in the description of this video. But the TLDR is that someone has tried to take a charge generation bonus and translate it as being a speed improvement. Now, unfortunately, the methodology they used is flawed uh, and it's not consistent. And ultimately, this just quite simply is not how the speed and the charge generation mechanics actually work in our game. The end result is that we have got charge speeds being incorrectly displayed on hero cards when they have an emblem or a variant charge bonus. So as an example of this, Hudson is actually a speed 50 hero, but you can see on this screen right here that he's showing a speed 54. And that's because someone is trying to uh, represent the 5% charge generation bonus that they get from the variant bonus as a speed improvement. And that's just not how it works. All right. So with those couple of important notes uh, sort of pointed out, let's get the rest of this review underway. So uh, first off, let's jump across and we can take a look at Variant Hudson's artwork. So, thank you very much to Duff and Raven for passing this along. Um, this is Variant, Hudson Arts, Variant Hudson's artwork. So, he is titled the Splatmasters Frontman. Um, so, we're kind of taking, I guess, some bland, band lingo, being a frontman, but also being a Splatmaster. I don't know what a Splatmaster really is, but I would hazard a guess it's something to do with the water bomb that he's holding his right hand. Um, but yeah, that's uh, Hudson's artwork. It is worth pointing out uh, that this is the first and only example of puzzle combat branding in the game. None of the other heroes actually have it, not even the ones that are a part of the main storylines um, as an interesting little tidbit, uh, but it is there on variant Hudson's cap. Um, but yeah, that's his artwork, so feel free to pause it if you wish, but otherwise, uh, I'm going to jump back across because there's not really too much else for me to say uh, about this here. So, yeah. So, Variant Hudson, as is with all of these heroes, he is a member of the Water Fight family, which means that he has a 10% chance to trigger the Soothing Waves effect whenever he casts his special skill. Now, the Soothing Waves effect will heal all allies for 10%, uh, sorry, for 13% health uh, immediately. So, two things to note with this. Number one, uh, the Soothing Waves effect is inherent to every member of the Water Fight family. You don't need multiple heroes from the family to trigger it. Everyone individually has this 10% chance to trigger the healing. The second thing to sort of note really is that the health is dependent on the receiver's max HP, not based on the caster. So it does mean that the health scales up and down a little bit based on uh, who is getting the healing, um, but it's always going to be that 13%, unless obviously you've got health, uh, sorry, healing affecting um, effects in play. Um, we can also see on the family bonus that there is a stat bonus. You can see down the bottom there for having multiple heroes of the same family in a battle. So there is a plus three, six, nine, or 12% defense bonus if you've got two, three, four, or five unique members from the family in battle. Now, this one, unlike the Soothing Waves, it does have to be multiple heroes and they do have to be unique heroes. So you can't get the defense bonus for having two copies of Variant Hudson in a fight. It's got to be two different heroes, like combining Variant Hudson with Guppy or with Finley as two different examples. On the personal side of things, um, Variant Hudson comes in with 738 attack when we, I will read these out as being inclusive of that Variant bonus because like I said, you can't actually get the Variant leveled up without also having the Variant bonus in play. So Variant Hudson comes in with 738 attack, 712 defense and 1,554 uh, sorry, and 44 HP. So um, there is not really any massive skewing going on here. Uh, if anything, there's a slight skew from that defense stat towards the uh, HP stat, but it's not a big one. It's relatively minor in the scheme of things. So um, yeah, as I said, this is including the variant bonus already, um, and you can't actually level the variant up without incurring that variant bonus. So that's why I'm uh, judging them based on that. 
Um, I will also mention that his power is quite high uh, compared to a lot of the other heroes from this portal. You've got the original heroes are down at 680 region. Um, the phase two, so Guppy and Wade, they're sort of at the 700-ish range, but Hudson is coming in at 726, or variant Hudson rather, is at uh, 726. Now, um, because this power is just a reflection of their base stats, because Variant Hudson has so much more stats because of that emblem, that Variant bonus, we do see that his power is quite uh, high compared to the other members of the family. Now, this is essentially just charge, uh, sorry, power creep at work, um, and this was sort of a selling point that SGG tried to make, was that Variants were a way of buffing old heroes, but without actually buffing them, but instead making us pay for them, so... Yeah, that is uh, worth pointing out there as well. On the charge side of things, uh, Variant Hudson is showing, is being represented as being a speed 54 hero. In reality, because of that bug I mentioned earlier, his actual charge speed is, ba is charge speed 50. Now, I will make all of my assessments based on the real charge speed, i.e. speed 50, and make some notes about the actual impact of the charge generation bonus from the variant, um, if you've got it obviously leveled and applying, which you will do. So, variant Hudson's actual charge speed is speed 50, which is average speed and requires 10 tiles to charge or five ghosted tiles. Now the speed break does happen at speed 58, so needs a plus eight speed improvement. Now red can quite easily do this. You've got two five star plus nine guns uh, in the form of the firewing trig or the Chekhov SVK. Either of those will get you that first speed break with the weapon alone. Alternatively, Red does have a four star plus seven Tigger happy weapon, um, but in order to get the speed break, you do need some additional form of charge generation bonus. So you can either get it from the 2% um, node on his class tree, or you can get it via the 5% bonus from his variant bonus. Either of those with the plus seven speed weapon will get you that single charge break. Now, um, a double break is not really, well, it's, I say not really, but it's not possible. Um, for Variant Hudson, you would need to get all the way up to speed 65, uh, which is a plus 15 improvement. So even if you were to combine a plus nine gun with the 2% charge node and the 5% variant charge generation bonus, you quite simply do not get to that double break. So at the end of the day for Variant Hudson, the 2% charge generation node isn't relevant. Um, and I mean, for that matter, nor really is the 5% unless you're using an unleveled or a four star speed gun for him. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the situation for his charge. Uh, on his class, uh, Variant Hudson is a Recon class hero as opposed to the base version, which is an Assault class hero. Uh, so the Recon class is one which grants the hero the chance to evade direct damage coming from special skills and grant 20% charge for each successful evasion. Now, I do really, really like the, the Recon perk. It is one of the ones that can very much shift a battle uh, in, in your favor or in the enemy team's favor as the case might be. Uh, it's essentially, it's a discrete chance to dodge damage um, while getting free charge for doing so. So because of that free charge and the chance, the extra chance to dodge, I do typically recommend putting at least plus one on recon class heroes when they're leveled just to activate that chance for the evasion. Now, how I would go about embleming variant uh, Hudson is I would definitely be going an attack path to enhance his damage output. That's how I would emblem him. So what this looks like on a recon class hero um, is something very much like what I have been doing here on Tightwire. Now, you will note that for this copy of Tightwire, I have avoided that speed node. Uh, the same thing applies for variant Hudson because there's no real need to grab that speed node. So the whole way down, we are just picking up the nodes that have got attack points on them um, and then following it all the way down. Now, plus 19 and plus 20 are not really relevant for an attack path. On one side, you've got a healing bonus, which doesn't do anything for the most part, and a defense bonus. And plus 20 on the recon class is never worth grabbing because it's too many emblems for crit chance. As much as I like crit chance, it's just too many emblems to gain that. So this is the path that I would recommend following for variant Hudson. Um, you will have to apply the emblems to the base version. So the you'll have to use assault class emblems on the base version of Hudson, but you would do it following this grid because the, um, 
what's it called? The variant just picks up the exact same path of the base version. It just puts it onto a different class tree. So yeah, to emblem variant Hudson, you need to follow this path, but on the base versions um, class tree is where you apply them. Cool, so pause that if you wish, but that is the path that I would suggest doing for variant Hudson. Cool, on to, oops, we'll get rid of that. Well, on to his special skill. So variant Hudson special skill is titled Overpressure Spray and at level 10 skill and 50 charge speed, it will deal 300% damage to the target with minor damage being dealt to nearby enemies. It will deal an additional 165% damage against armored enemies. It will then apply a minus 28% charge generation ailment to the target and nearby enemies for three turns. And finally, it will dispel all the buffs from the target and nearby enemies. So, couple bits to look at there. Before we dive into the damage, which is the part we will look at first, I do want to explain, explain the phrase minor damage. Now, minor damage is quite simply half the listed percentage in their special skill. So in the case of Variant Hudson, he is dealing 300% damage to the target, which means that he'll deal 150% damage strike to the nearby enemies, the minor damage component. Now, because of how the damage calculation actually runs, this is not actually a 50% reduction in damage. It ends up being roughly 42% of the damage done to the target enemy, all things being equal. So because of this massive drop off in the damage that's done on the nearby enemies, I tend to constitute minor damage heroes as just doing splash damage and then compare them as if they're snipers. Because at the end of the day, the predominant amount of their damage is directed at a single target and then drops off substantially onto the nearby enemies. So with that in mind, let's take a bit of a detailed look at the damage component of his skill. So as always, the damage is so easy to calculate, but there's a lot of variability that flows into the calculation that it makes comparisons hard. So to simplify it, I use uh, attack power as a comparison metric, which just removes some of that variability. Now attack power feeds into the damage count, so it's analogous to the final damage output, but it is calculated as being a hero's attack stat, 738, multiplied by the percentage in their special skill, which in the case of Hudson is 300% or variant Hudson rather. So what this works out as being, we can see him having an attack power of 2,214, which when speed normalized comes out as being 221. So ninth spot of the 18 red snipers in the game. So not a bad sniping option, um, kind of middle of the pack in terms of his, his base damage output. Um, if we were to look at all of the sniping options in the game, it's fairly much the same. He comes out as being 55th of the 86 total options that we have across all the elements. Um, so yeah, not too bad, kind of middle of the pack, but where he really starts shining is with that bonus damage when he hits an armored enemy. And with that additional 165%, it drops him or pushes him rather all the way up to an attack power per tile of 343, which puts him into the fifth position on the red sniping list uh, and moves him far up the list up into number 16 position of the 86 options across all the colors. So when you have an opportunity to hit an enemy with armor, Huds variant Hudson does get a big damage improvement against that primary target and against the minor enemies as well, if they happen to have armor as well. But against the primary target, it's a big damage improvement if they've got armor. So you can see some of the other options on there. You've obviously got Nomad at the top of the list. He is stupidly busted in his, uh, his attack damage, um, particularly when he can do it with his buff. But anyway, um, Serpent is next on there at 470, Renegade at uh, 378. Uh, you've also got Ridge as a notable splash damage hero at 379, um, who's quite high up there as well. But there's a lot of other options on this list which you can pause and peruse as you may wish to do so. So that's his damage output. Middle of the pack in terms of the red snipers with an opportunity to really push up into the, the upper uh, quartile um, when hitting an armored enemy. Um... Moving on from the damage, the next part of his skill is the charge generation debuff. So the target and nearby enemies get minus 28% charge generation for three turns. Now, 
This is a form of charge control in the game. It's not as immediate in its effect as a charge cut, nor is it necessarily as effective as a mindless attack or insanity ailment, but it is still a very effective charge control ailment. Um, how it works is what it does is it reduces the charge units that a, an afflicted hero would receive. So instead of them getting one charge unit per tile that they, they move, they instead get 0.72 charge units per tile. And this applies to all forms of charge that that hero would get. It comes affects uh, tile charge, it uh, affects buffs, minions, passive charge generation gained by defense heroes, any form of charge that they would gain is reduced by 28%. So to get a little bit technical to explain exactly how um, effective this or how powerful this buff can be, if we took a, a, a fast speed hero who's got speed 68, just as an example, normally they would need eight tiles to charge. Instead, when they're afflicted by this buff for those three turns, it would not be eight tiles to charge their skill, it would be 11 tiles to charge their skill. Um, because the number of tiles or the charge units gets dropped off by that 28%. If we took a, another example of a average speed hero needing 45, uh, sorry, with 45 as their charge speed, normally they would need 11 tiles to charge, but instead under this buff, they would require 15 tiles to get their charge to 100%. So incredibly powerful in terms of the the charge degeneration that a hero will receive and i find this ailment to actually be a much better option if you're looking to set off cascades and move the board around without as much risk of the enemy heroes charging because what often happens is if you use a charge cut yes they lose 30 percent charge but then you set off a big cascade and boom they've got that charge back again immediately whereas if you've got this charge slow effect it takes it and really compresses and condenses the amount of charge that those enemy heroes are going to gain from that big tile cascade now don't get me wrong charge cut and that sort of thing is generally more useful um, because it removes an immediate threat but charge degeneration or charge generation debuffs are still extremely boss all the same so yeah highly effective effect that he's got there on that charge slow the final part of his skill is the dispel which remove where it says it removes buffs from the target and nearby enemies now this is a really great effect as well it's got so many uses in the game because essentially any buffs that are on the afflicted enemies will just disappear except of course for those that state that this effect cannot be cleared all right the other thing it doesn't remove is stacks such as the rock band heroes or effects that have a no end duration, such as uh, max HP reduction or a hero um, that would provide a, a buff for the, the rest of the, uh, the, the battle. Those ones aren't affected and removed. Um, there aren't a huge number of AoE dispellers in the game. Um, there are fewer still that are actually AoE, um, that are wide range AoE hitters, uh, sorry, dispellers. So in total, there are actually only 16 uh, AOE dispellers who are five star heroes. If you expanded it out and included the four stars as well, there's only actually an extra four. So of the of all of the heroes that we have across all the four and five star uh, heroes, we only have 20 AOE dispellers, which is pretty tiny when you consider that that hero pool is in excess of like 200, 250 heroes at this stage. Um, so yeah, the big, the big downside to Variant Hudson's Dispel is like with pretty much every Dispeller in the game, it only dispels from enemies that he hits and the Dispel is listed after the damage component in his skill. Now, as I said, this isn't unique to Variant Hudson. It is the case for pretty much every Dispeller in the game. There are only a handful of heroes that will dispel from enemies that they don't specifically have to hit. Specifically, you've got Pantera, Thalia, Rex, Ryoko, and Variant Throttle. Those are the only heroes that will dispel from more enemies than they actually hit or deal damage to. Um, but because of this effect on Hudson, because of the order it's listed in, or Variant Hudson rather, it does mean that if he hits an enemy with counterattack, for example, he's going to take that returned damage before he removes the buff, all right? So still incredibly powerful effect just because of how many buffs and buff creating heroes actually exist in the game. 
Um, so yeah, very, very powerful. Adds an extra little bit of a nuance to when you might use his skill beyond just being the charge slow or the damage that he's got in his skill. Now, before I get into some summaries and uh, into the grading, I will address the one question that everyone always asks when it comes to variants. And that's the question of which should I use, the variant or the normal version of this hero? Now, for variant Hudson, um, I would say that absolutely, categorically, there is no reason to ever use the base version if you've got the variant available. The, the base version is just that bad compared to the variant version. You know, the, the base version has very terrible damage and an absolutely horrendous um, secondary effect with that DOT. It, it's not a great combination of effects, but by comparison, the variant version has much higher damage. It's got the charge slow and it's got a dispel. It's got three pretty useful effects compared to none, essentially. So... Yeah, in many cases, uh, it, it can be a tough choice about which one you should use, but in the case of Hudson, there's no real competition. So following through with that, overall, I do think that variant, Hud variant Hudson is a massive improvement over his base version, right? His direct damage and situational damage are both huge improvements. He actually has um, an impact in terms of that damage on the variant version. Yes, we are still having minor damage to the nearby. It's not as great as if it was a DOA 3 hitter, but we still get an extra little bit of damage on those nearby enemies. Plus, it allows for the speed ailment and the dispel to actually be procced on those people as well, rather than just being single target only in their effect. Um, charge generation debuff is really, I think, Hudson's peak attribute. It is a very useful skill in an attacks, and it can actually be incredibly annoying when you encounter it on a defense team. And that dispel at the end is really just the nice little bonus and adds that extra layer of strategy to when you and where you would actually use him uh, in your team. So for variant Hudson's grading, I am going to give him a B plus for his raid and war attack grade. I do think he has got quite a number of uses um, beyond being a damage dealer just with that charge slow and with that dispel. So a B plus for his war and raid attacks. Um, on the war machines, I'm going to drop him down to a B minus. Um, the charge slow is still actually quite useful for war machines, um, but the dispel and the damage have less of an impact in this sphere, and he's not creating any buffs or ailments that are going to help you improve your damage output. On the eventing, similarly, uh, sniper with AoE, not a great option for eventing, so I'm going to give him a B minus here as well. Um, yeah, not, not a great event hero um, in general. On the defense side of things, so for war and raid defenses, I'm going to give him a B- minus here as well. Um, his stats don't make him the greatest defensive hero, and uh, let's be honest, his damage output really needs the, the armor to be of like top or noticeable impact. But in saying that, that charge slow can actually be quite annoying to encounter on defense teams as well. So I'm going to keep him at a B- minus for his general raid and war defense grade. In our three tournaments uh, on the bloody battles, there is no armor permitted under this rule set. So uh, Variant Hudson loses any ability to gain that bonus damage. So I'm going to knock him down to being a B grade for a bloody battle attack and a C plus for his bloody battle defense. On the buff boosters, he does have the buff dispel, which is really quite uh, powerful on the buff booster tawny, seeing as uh, the rule set promotes additional buff usage. So I'm going to give him an A- minus for buff booster attack and a B grade for buff booster defense. And finally, in the charge tournaments, he does get a speed improvement going from 65 up, sorry, from 50 up to 65. So I'm going to give him a, a bit of a grading boost as well. So I'm going to give him an A minus for charge tournament attack and a B grade for charge tournament defense. Um, I do note as well, I never actually said where to place him on a defense team. I'd probably put him at left or right flank would be the positions I'd put him at. Um, probably not a great tank option. Uh, wing position, probably not going to be of huge impact there. Could work, but I would guess that he would, might not be the greatest option. So flank, I would say, would be his best position. So overall for Variant Hudson's grading, that comes out as being a B grade for his overall attack and a B minus for his overall defense grade. 
And that concludes the content I have for this review of Variant Hudson. As always, these are just my personal thoughts and opinions on these heroes. I do value your thoughts and feedback, so please do drop down to the comments, leave me a note. I try to read and respond as much as possible. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, found it to be useful and want to find some other stuff, feel free to like it, subscribe to my channel, and definitely poke around. There's heaps of other reviews and other content on that channel um, that you may or may not find useful for yourself. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in and joining me. I do hope I will see you again in another video, perhaps the normal Hudson review if you haven't watched that already. But until then, good luck, stay safe, and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.